Attention, OzCat listeners. This is not a drill. Push back from the bong. Exhale and focus your mind. This is a VIB news attack. A joint production of OzCat Radio at 89.5 FM Vallejo, California and the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com. Tonight, April 8th, 2014, we have Council Talk with Ann Carr, international woman of mystery and political pundit, and me, Mark Garman. Well, Ann, we had some, some interesting topics this evening. Oh my goodness, what a long meeting tonight. Good God, here we are, it's the midnight hour at the townhouse bar in beautiful and exciting downtown Vallejo. It's we, way past my bedtime, I know, but we're going to try to crank out some fresh news straight from the council chambers. Holy smoky to bear. Well, one of the big topics tonight was, uh, was cannabis and medical cannabis. Nope, stop that. Stop that. None of that. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the headline act. That was the headline act yes. tonight, was to consider whether or not a moratorium on medical marijuana dispensaries should be extended in Vallejo for another year. Right. And we had some folks there from medical cannabis collectives and so on and so forth. Um, kind of a divided council on this topic. Uh, the mayor does not like the idea of medical cannabis. He was very clear about that. Right. I think he. I think Mayor Osby may have even surprised city staff with his recommendation. City staff had come t uh, prepared with some recommendations saying that, gee, we ought to have regulations that limit the number of dispensaries to four, one per quadrant in the city. And uh, Mayor Davis has requested that the city staff also look at prohibiting it altogether, which would be pretty much a reversal of the direction Vallejo has been going in. Which, which would probably be kind of messy because based on the uh, outcome of the court cases uh, so far we've had I think six go to to trial and all get thrown out of court. Um, these are the cannabis collectives that got raided so that that route doesn't seem to be one that is yielding anything except more lawsuits potentially. Yes, yeah, so there have been a lot of California cities apparently that have outlawed cannabis clubs, but Vallejo had made the decision early on to issue business tax certificates to some, and then we've since had a proliferation of cannabis clubs operating without certificates. And so between the two, to scale that back all together and not have any clubs at all, I think would be l pretty difficult within the city of Vallejo. Pretty much. It looks that way. I mean, I think the, the count that they're talking about is, uh, you know, we're up to possibly 21 or 19 or 23 or something like that. <laughs> I mean, I did a little research. I think San Francisco, a much bigger city, has 28. So we are, we are certainly, um, you know, going for high numbers in some areas in this town. And, and lots of cannabis collectives would seem to be, to be one of them. Right. So we have a, Vallejo is very amply dis, uh, supplied with cannabis at this point. Perhaps maybe more clubs than our own city population would require, or even the county population. Interesting little thing I found in looking up cannabis use across the state. In Solano County, there are only 142 cannabis cards issued in the whole county. Now, that's really interesting when you look at a city that has somewhere between 19 and 21 clubs. Where are their other customers coming from? So we, I think we, you can pretty much say that we have enough clubs to satisfy our own population needs. And whether or not we want to be a destination supplier is, remains to be seen. Well, we're, we definitely have uh, uh, reached a level of being a destination uh, for this stuff. And um, although we are the only city in Solano County uh, that has not put a ban, and uh, based on the May 6, 2013 Supreme Court decision, uh, cities can, in fact, decide whether they want to regulate or, or ban medical cannabis. Right. So the... The state case law really does allow cities and counties to decide that, but again, Vallejo had decided early on to tax these entities with a $500 business license and then 10% sales tax. 
and in a way that's almost a de facto permission to operate when you when you do that. Now, uh, lawyers and whatever analysts can say no. In fact, that doesn't mean that they're permitted. But I think that's that's a hard case to argue. So um, I think that that. Uh, Andrea Aus, the planning manager, has really come to the city with what seems to me a pragmatic approach of saying, well, let's try to regulate what we have and really right-size the business to our city population um, and, and live with it. Because uh, a lot of people do believe in medical marijuana. A lot of people believe in recreational marijuana. And it's kind of interesting when you look at the national trend, 20 states have legalized marijuana for medical uses. Another 13 states have pending le legislation. Um, of course, two states have recreational use. And so there's really a national trend on marijuana use here. Yeah, the writing's kind of on the wall. Um, you know, although the mayor, I mean, he was, like I say, very outspoken and he he was very upfront with saying in, in a, I guess we could say an, an, an angry and cautionary tone <laughs> a scolding tone I guess would be the word do we want to be the marijuana capital of the area um, you know, ultimately the vote moved forward and um, you know, we're gonna have a moratorium at this point and right so we have a moratorium that will go until next year April 2015 correct and then in the meantime city staff will be looking at developing regulations potentially for marijuana and they will also come back to city council with the possibility of prohibiting it so neither way has been decided altogether right so it went from looking at a looking at uh, developing an ordinance to regulate so now we're going to look at the, the prospects of either regulating it or or eliminating it um, so that's kind of where it stands I mean uh, some of the different council members that weighed in uh, council member McConnell uh, he's spoken about it. Uh, there's a guy who's a Vietnam vet who uh, saw cannabis used in the battlefield to alleviate pain. So he's got a, a, a very specific uh, position on the uses and, and, and so on. Uh, but as always with McConnell, he, he's uh, a man who, who wants to look at all the facts. You know, he's a very uh, scholarly lawyer and, and, and so on. Um, you know, some of the other council members that, that, that weighed in, um, you know, it, uh, Verda Liga. Uh, does not seem to be in favor. She was, uh, she wanted to see, she kind of follows Osby along. Well, Verda Liga, I find it difficult sometimes to understand exactly what her position is. She seems to talk to a wide range of opinions and then very often, like we saw tonight with a different decision, come out of left field with something that doesn't seem to tuck back to what she's discussed in her comments. It so is sometimes and sometimes she just talks and we, we don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss yeah, that more later. She's finding her legs there and yeah. uh, maybe you've got a little abuse of the microphone going on that her, some of her comments need to be a little more filtered and we'll focused. Try not to be too hard on her. Well, we did have, uh, uh, you know, on the flip side of uh, uh, cannabis and things cannabis and not can we did have a bunch of uh, new employees Right. Uh, appoint, uh, uh, hired. Right. So we actually, really great news for Vallejo. We have a new economic development manager, and she comes to us with a very impressive background. She worked most recently for the Port of San Francisco. She has 20 years in public and private projects. Uh, she worked at one point for the California Lawyers for the Arts. She worked on Presidio Trust. She worked on the Giants Bell Park and a, a lot of good things that seem will be a great background for Vallejo. And then in addition to her, we have six new police hires and three new trainees. And uh, between the nine of them, eight of them have military backgrounds. One guy has two Purple Hearts. There were a couple guys who showed up in uh, full regalia with all their ribbons. It was very impressive. Absolutely. So it looks like we're getting some, uh, some skilled people in, in, in Vallejo. People are coming here and they're being hired by the city, which once again is a nice trend to see. Uh, also another aside, April 2014 is Public Schools Month. Right. Another yeah. proclamation thing. Um, it was uh, apparently this was something that was started by the Masons back in the 1920s. Um, and so that is, a, you know, it's a nice effort. And 
um, you would only hope that you could actually see some action going along with the city effort to make a proclamation where even though the schools are run by a different administration, um, it would be great to have more interaction between the actual city operation and the school operation to do what we can in there. Um, one thing that is kind of related to that, uh, to schools and youth, is it was something that was hidden in the consent calendar. There's a little summer jobs program that was approved tonight. Uh, it's called the Youth Energy Services, and they're going to be doing job training in conservation and energy work for, I don't know, it looks like about 15 kids over the summer age 15 to 22. So I thought that was really positive. Well, and the other thing, uh, we've touched on happy little trees, and now there's the issue about a large artificial tree. Right. Oh, my goodness. This was a very contentious issue. So it's the position and uh, visual impact of a large cell phone tower. And fraught with litigation, um, our pals at uh, AT&T have uh, done some things to try to redesign and hide this uh, cell phone tower, but the neighbors that are nearby are very upset, and they showed up in force. Absolutely. Um, and this is located. It's going to be in a. Uh, it's going to be in a shopping mall. The shopping little shopping area, Rancho Square, which is just north, just off of Twenty Nine, and uh, north there of Thirty Seven. Right, and some of the folks were talking about the proximity to the cell tower. Um, there was some confusion. I mean, I think AT and T was saying ninety nine feet, and the woman said it's sixty five feet from her property line. So right. So there's a close. big concern that the self, this huge cell phone, ta cell phone tower, would be too close to residences, single-family homes, low density, medium density, which incidentally is prohibited in the city zoning. So um, AT and T had modified their original proposal. They'd come in with an 80-foot pole originally, and um, now they've modified that to be a 70-foot pole with a faux eucalyptus tree that uh, council member Katie Meisner said looked like a large brush, almost like a public sculpture. So, it does you know, not look like a eucalyptus tree, I'm sorry. <laughs> we want to be a destination city, so maybe we should rethink this and just go for these large uh, sculptures. One, one guy that got up and spoke actually had what sounds like a good idea. Um, he is apparently the guy, he's an electrician, and he's worked on uh, these kind of towers, and his suggestion was to, to disguise it as the, the, the marquee with the sign, which he said he's uh, worked on jobs where, where they've done that. Right. Uh, in the past, and, which doesn't sound like a bad idea. It's like, oh, this is a good idea. Right. And um, actually, even Andrea Aus, the planning manager, had said that in the whole idea of having a line of sight, that the AT&T would have had the option of having multiple smaller towers as opposed to a large tower. And so really, I think this is a missed opportunity for Vallejo, that Vallejo didn't insist on getting fewer ta or more towers that were lower and have uh, less visual impact. So um, they did manage to pass a measure that says that at and is going to have to disguise the tower and um, have add plantings to minimize the, the visual impact of the tower. But um, it really is a shame that it's gotten to this point that other alternatives couldn't have been explored. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the residents, they feel like they didn't get properly noticed. They didn't have time. They just found out about it. And, you know, the thing is where we're, we have limited say over these kind of things because of the Federal Telecom Act. Um, these kind of communication installations, they've got, uh, uh, I don't know all the legal parameters, but I know that they have got some special right-of-way considerations um, when they put this in there. Um, it's interesting, I mean, the, the, they were talking about the different owners of this mall. There's two, two halves, and one guy's from uh, out of town. It, it was actually comical because uh, <laughs> at one point, Council Member Werner Liga was like, oh, this guy's from, where was he from? San Mateo. San Mateo, he's probably not here. And it was the first guy that talked. So right. I don't know. So uh, but it, I, was, it was a it long was a meeting. Long, so me, yeah. So maybe she forgot, or she wasn't paying well, attention. Or, I had a few lapses of attention tonight. It was uh, it was it was <laughs> somewhat painful at times. Yeah, there were a lot of neighbors there who were really upset. And on the one hand, I'm really thrilled that they came to the meeting and showed up. 
but I wish they could have had more impact the way they wanted it. I think Councilmember McConnell came up with some good conditions to try to mitigate the, the visual impact of this large tower, but in the end, it really would have been good to see other locations thoroughly explored. And the main thing that seems to be an advantage about this site is that the landlord was willing and he gets substantial benefit, of course. Absolutely, and I think we ended up with kind of a, a very convoluted agreement where they agreed to approve it uh, moving forward, but with the option to continuing the public hearing and with the option of later modifying the parameters of the plan, but only for those who voted yes on the item in con in conjunction in, in compliance with Robert's Rules of Order. So. Right, it was interesting to see all the lawyers scrambling to see who could find out the Robert's Rules of Orders that would apply and who would get to bring the motion again. Um, so, but for right now, it's approved with a bunch of conditions. And that's about all the time we have, and that's the long and short of what happened for April 8th, 2014 at Vallejo City Council. Your government, pay attention. Good night, Anne. Uh, good night, Mark.